Hey guys, um, so I let you guys know a little bit earlier. Y'all say hi to Kita. Say what's up, y'all? You gonna say hello with your curls? Um, I let you know that I wanted you to be able to watch this video being very open-minded. And I want to speak specifically to our thoughts about God. And a lot of times, what we think about God comes from the written word, the scriptures. It comes from sermons. It comes from small group or Sunday school. Maybe it comes from what our grandfather um, used to teach us when we were little. It might come from our own time since spent seeking out who God is and what he's all about. For a number of years, I um, believed a thought system that was something like this. And you might hear some things that you recognize. And you want to give him a paw? Um, and you might recognize some things that maybe you yourself believe and that's okay um so the thought pattern and belief system that i lived for a number of years was that god created man um but that adam fell and because adam fell there was this thing called sin and this thing called sin could actually separate you from god and It required uh, God to take his most precious connection, which was Jesus, and it required him to actually allow his child, his boy, to be born and crucified so that this thing that Adam had done to us could now potentially be gotten out of, that we could accept Jesus and we could, if we did that, then we got to go to heaven and there were streets of gold and there was angels singing and mansions and jewels in our crowns. And if we <clears throat> went from a little kid that while we were born of God, as we got older, we got this sinful thing going on, right? When we hit this size, 10, 12 years old, and we realized what sin was, then if we decided that we didn't want to accept Jesus and allow God to be ours, Father, then we would go to hell and there would be extreme torture for all of eternity, limitless torture. Um burning, you know, skin burning, and uh, think of the worst insane asylum that you could possibly imagine in your finite mind, and that would be what you heard, and it would just be constant darkness and screaming and torture. I'm thankful that I said that prayer. Good grief. I think about the fact that I took my kids to church and allowed them to be taught this. Now, what I'm telling you right now is, is, is only my own thoughts, okay? These are not things that I'm suggesting that you believe or that you even have to have an opinion about. This is just my thoughts, okay? When I think about the fact that for a very long time, I showed my children a God that would only be unconditionally loving if they admitted that he was their God, and that I actually in my heart believed he was unconditional, but I couldn't quite make it um, connect up with there being this opportunity for him to remove his blessing it it never settled in here now I definitely was on the front lines and like you know passing out tracks and trying to save people from 
this torturous hell thing, right? But never did it settle, okay? And so what I want to share with you is the shift that's happened for me, okay? I think that a lot of times we, te we take man's opinion of God, which is the scriptures. A lot of the scriptures are no different than my Facebook statuses. They really are the exact same thing. They're my experience with God and, and how that made sense through here so that I could do it through here and do it right here. That's what a, a lot of the Bible is. It's storytelling. And I do believe a lot of it. I do believe that did, I do believe God created us in a complete love fest. I believe the same reason why I had kids was for relationship. I 100%, I know that to be true about my father. Now, for some wacky reason, I can't look <clears throat> at a baby <laughs> and see anything but innocence. Now, I do think that we learn mine. We learn slap. We learn punch. We learn cuss. We learn kill. So, yeah, I do think as a child gets older, they start to learn some really bad stuff. You know what? Let's break it down. Let's get honest. We have grandfathers and fathers and uncles and aunts and grandmothers and mothers and big sisters and big brothers that are molesting and raping and touching a lot of kids in this world. And then they grow up and they're taught how to keep it pressed down because they're, 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 they're ashamed they have no idea how to make it make sense in their mind. And they, they do grow up and have some crazy thoughts. I don't, I, I believe that there's definitely darkness and evil in the world. But I don't necessarily think it has to have some big scary guy with horns and a pitchfork for it to happen. You know what I think a big portion of it is? I believe it's mental illness. And I broke my foot. And when I broke my foot, everybody supported me going to the doctor and getting a boot, which was bringing my situation down to a secluded area so my bone could heal. Everybody said, good job. Get better, Jen. You got this. <clears throat> but if I had a thought process break, I have to not tell anybody. <laughs> I have to keep it super quiet because I could lose my job. I might not be able to get potential jobs in the future. So that turns to drinking and drugging and all kinds of crazy responses to a broken thought process. That's it. It's taboo and it's really affected a lot of people. I don't think there has to be a Satan in the world because I think mental illness is running rampant. Okay, so let's, let's bring it together. I don't think God infused us with his DNA and then as we got big and learned what sin was, that he pulled his DNA back out of us and that we now have to have this strange experience with Jesus knocking on our, on our heart. It's so strange. God created Jesus. God created us. Why would Jesus knock on anything? We're one. I mean, he said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And so I believe that whole entire connection is all one. So why would... Jesus or God have to knock on anything. I believe he's been a part of our DNA since before we even knew what DNA was and, and that he doesn't ever strip it away. And this life is really just about figuring out what true unconditional love is. But we have to first know what that means. And the only place that I've found that's consistent in the last six or seven years has been the unconditional love of, of my father, of God. But you see, my mindset isn't wrapped around sin or figuring out if somebody else has a correct mindset about what I want them to believe. It's just about me sharing my thoughts. And sometimes people agree and some people don't agree and that's all right. 
You know, it's okay for us to step outside of your denomination and my denomination and my religious beliefs and your religious beliefs or someone else's lack thereof. And we don't we don't have to all be following the same script, you guys, especially if that script was simply man's opinion of a deity that we're trying to get to know on a real level. Now, do I think true and total unconditional love could ever, ever, ever let their child uh, uh, spend eternity being tortured because they don't quite get something while they're on this planet after enduring God knows what? I think that God, in his infinite love and wisdom, created us and he accounted for eternity. I believe that we're here to to shine light on each other so that that will reflect inside of the heart of the person we're near and they will begin shining. But we cannot do that if we're constantly trying to make sure that our script lines up. At the end of the day, guys, I know some folks who don't even ever even use the word G-O-D and I've never met anybody more unconditionally loving in my life. You know, I think that we are completely missing the boat if we only show up to meetings and talk about what happened 2,000 years ago when a husband and wife are about to fight all the way home and not speak to each other for the next three days and not make love and not be able to connect on a real level and their kids will experience the, the tension and they'll go to school and they'll act out. People want to talk about feel-good pastors. Well, you know what? They're, this world is hard. We should be able to show up and feel good for just a minute. I'm going to tell you something. I I told my 13-year-old son tonight, I said, son, if you just open a door for somebody, look them in the eye and just say hi, it can invoke something inside of them. They will feel something. And if enough people are doing that, imagine what we could experience. I think it's time that we stop having an us versus them mentality. You do you. I'll do me. Let's do love together. Let's connect with each other. Let's quit looking for things that that are separating us and look for things that connect us. If we want to talk about an unconditional God, why don't we allow him to be? I want to go home from meetings and know how to do life. Sure, the Bible says love is kind, love is patient, love is gentle. But how do I apply that to my, you know, my drug addicting neighbor who's knocking on my door at 3 a.m.? How do I apply that? I think it's okay for us to unconditionally accept his unconditional love for us and to not be stuck in this like strange thought process that we're going someplace else because God loved this kid more than this kid. I can't imagine sacrificing Logan so that Alex will one day have a choice whether or not I'm his mom. He shouldn't want to be mine. (laughs) And I don't know that I necessarily want to be the, the child of a God who could subject his kids to something because they didn't figure it out. I don't know. These are thoughts that I have often I'm sorry this video was so long, guys, but I had to I had to wrap that full thought together. A lot shifted in my mindset, and I think there's life and love in it. And I think it's okay to open up your heart and your mind to the, the idea that maybe we were taught a few things that weren't necessarily right for us. And that it might be okay to open up our ideas of how can we unconditionally love a world if we don't believe that we're unconditionally loved by the one who created it. I think that God loves us just like we are. I think he loves you just just as you are. And I think he's got you. And I think that the more we open ourselves up to what that might mean, the more life that we're going to find versus more bondage. Um, I love you guys. Have an excellent night.